Welcome to my series of videos on Mathematics for Economists. In this video, I would like to determine the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a third example matrix given by the rows 311, 050, and 2, 02, and 3. And we're going to see in a minute that this is an example for a matrix where the usual eigenvalue decomposition doesn't quite work out. So let's look at the eigenvalues, which are the roots of the characteristic polynomial, which is the determinant of the matrix 3 minus lambda 1, 1, 0, 5 minus lambda 0, 0, 2, 3 minus lambda. And I see right away that the first column only has one non-zero entry. And so I'm going to expand the determinant along this column. So I get 3 minus lambda times the determinant of the submatrix that results from deleting the first row and the first column, which is 5 minus lambda times 3 minus lambda minus 2 times 0. So I'm done. And this is, again, conveniently given right away in its decomposition into linear factors. And I also see right away that, again, um, the eigenvalue lambda equal to 3 has an algebraic multiplicity, an algebraic multiplicity of 2, or double root, if you will. So let's find the corresponding eigenvectors. Okay, so I need to solve the system of equations m3 minus lambda times i, so lambda now for the first eigenvalue is equal to 3 times i times the vector v, which has three entries, equals the zero vector in R3. And schematically, um, I can write m3 minus 3 times identity, 3 minus 3 is 0, 1, 1, 0, 5 minus 3 is 2, 0, 0, 2, 3 minus 3 is 0, and this needs to result in the 0 vector on the right hand side. Obviously, second and third row contain the same information, so uh, I can eliminate one of them, and I can divide by 2, I get 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, and subtracting the second from the third eliminates the third row, right? And so in the end I can subtract the second row from the first, and I get 0, 0, 1, 0, and the pivotal row remains the same, and the third still has no information, and I see that x3 is equal to 0, and I see that x2 is equal to 0, and x1 can be whatever it likes, and I see that my eigenvector is given by 1, 0, 0. Hmm. Where is the second? Because remember, we have a an algebraic multiplicity of 2. So we would expect that there are two linearly independent vectors that solve the system of equations so that we can populate our p matrix for the eigenvalue decomposition with it. And that is not the case. There's only one eigenvector here. Um, I'm going to show you how to solve the situation uh, by giving you the recipe. I'm not going to go into the uh, theoretical background of, of why this is the case. Uh, what we have to do is we have to find another vector which is called a generalized eigenvector. And we find this next vector by solving a different system of equations which is given by m3 minus 3 times identity squared times a vector equals the zero vector in R3. Okay, So let's compute this, uh, this squared matrix. We have the 
matrix M3 minus three times identity standing right there. So uh, let's quickly find the square of this. Zero, one, one, zero, two, zero, zero, two, zero. Multiplied with zero, one, one, zero, two, zero, zero, two, zero. Uh, this is not seen by zero. Again, I'm going to have zero times zero plus one times zero plus one times zero. And now here, zero times one plus one times two plus one times two, that's four. Here I get zero. Here I get zero. Here I get four, zero, zero, four, zero. We have a very simple matrix. All rows contain the same information. So I need to solve zero, four, zero. 0, 0, 4, 0, 0, 0, 4, 0, 0. Kind of silly that I'm writing it all out, but, but it doesn't matter. Um, so now, obviously, I can quickly reduce to the system which contains really only one equation, which tells me that x2 is equal to 0, and x1 and x3 can be whatever they like. And so I get a second vector here, which again is not an eigenvector, but a generalized eigenvector that contains the entries 1, 0 for x2 and 1 for x3. Okay. Um, now I can go ahead and begin to populate my, my matrix P as 1, 0, 0, now I found 1, 0, 1. And now I'm missing still the eigenvector that corresponds to the eigenvalue 5 here, right? So let's find that one. So I need to solve the system m3 minus 5 times identity times a vector of three entries, a 0, 0, 0. Um, OK, m3 minus 5 times identity is uh, 3 minus 5 is minus 2, 1, 1, 0, 5 minus 5 is 0, 0, um, 0, 2, 3 minus 5 is minus 2, 0, 0, 0. All right. Now, I can, of course, switch rows um, without changing the solution space of the system. And I can divide by uh, 2 here right away. So I get minus 2, 1, 1, 0. I haven't done anything here. 0, 1, minus 1, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 0. OK. Now I subtract the second row from the first. I get minus 2, 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus minus 1 is plus 2, 0, and the second one is the pivot, doesn't change anything. And so now I divide the first row by 2, and I get, well, let me divide by minus 2, and I get 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. This says that x1 minus x3 equals 0, or in other words, x1 equals x3. This, this says x2 minus x3 equals 0, or in other words, x2 equals x3. And thus, I get vector 3 as um, all entries are the same, 1, 1, 1, and I have found my third eigenvector. This one again is a proper eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue 5, 1, 1, 1. Yeah. In order to achieve my, um, my decomposition, which in this case is not the standard eigenvalue decomposition. Um, in order to achieve my decomposition, I will in any case need p inverse. So let's determine p inverse right away while we have it here. Uh, 1, 0, 0, 
1011111 and as usual I invert by writing the identity on the right hand side and now row reducing to achieve the identity on the left hand side. Um, so let's add the third row to the second to give 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 1, and uh, then I'm going to, well, let me, let me do this step by step, uh, 0, 0, 1. Uh, now I will subtract the second row from the third. This gets uh, um, so here zero. This is the pivot. Nothing changes here. One one. Uh, this gives me zero. One minus one is zero, which is what I wanted, of course. One minus two is minus one. Zero minus zero. Zero minus one minus one. Minus one minus one and zero. Okay. Uh, now I subtract the second row from the first. This gets uh, uh, 1 minus 0, 1, 1 minus 1, 0, 1 minus 2, minus 1, uh, 1 minus 0, 1, 0 minus 1, minus 1, 0 minus 1, minus 1. And here I divide Now, finally, I add the third row to the first. One, zero, zero, one, zero, minus plus, uh, minus one. And then I can also right away subtract. two times the third row from the second. So this uh, this here is 0, 1, 2 minus 2 times 1 is 0, 0 minus 2 times 0 is 0, 1 minus 2 times 1 is minus 1, 1 minus 2 times 1, zero, uh, excuse me, 1 minus 2 times 0 is still 1, and the third one remains unchanged. unchanged. Now, supposedly, if I've done everything right, this is P inverse. Uh, let's check if I indeed did everything right by checking whether P inverse P is equal to the identity. Um, so let's calculate the matrix product. 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, 0 with P, which was Zero, zero, uh, zero, one, and the third one was all ones. One, one. Okay. Um, one, zero, 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 one. Zero. 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 One. Checks out. Good work. Um, then I can now calculate, or not calculate, I can at this point just simply write down the decomposition of the matrix M3 as P times a matrix times P inverse and the matrix in the middle now is not a Dieck matrix. Uh, let me call this matrix J and 
we're going to get p of course we have determined as 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 1 and p inverse we have obtained as 1 0 0 0 minus 1 1 minus 1 1 0 so that should go in the middle in the middle this is v1 this is v2 this is v3 right v3 corresponds to the eigenvalue 5 so that one has the familiar shape um, v1 corresponds to the eigenvalue 3 v2 is a generalized eigenvector that also corresponds in this generalized sense to the eigen value 3. We are going to put a 1 in the first off diagonal and we get this block that is called a Jordan block. A Jordan block. And in total we get the Jordan decomposition of the matrix M3. And you can check at home that indeed the resulting product of these three matrices is the initially given 3, 1, 1, 0, 5, 0, 2, 0, 2, and 3. All right, we're done.